Randall, we're we're here at Cosmic Summit, co-hosting as we as we do. You know, we've done this many times now. We're live. We're what do you live. have here? I don't know. It's a mysterious envelope that came in for me today. I haven't opened it. This came in for you. Yeah. You want to open it live? Open I'm it. Not, I'm not sure. To break it open. I don't know what it is. We get blown up, people. You saw it live. Okay. It releases some type of dangerous chemical bio. You got a knife on you? I don't have a knife on me, actually. Yeah, I, just, I hate ripping up envelopes, just making a big mess out of them. But it's all right. Okay. What do you think about that while you're opening this up? Carolina Bays talk. Oh, yeah. I love those guys. It's I'm, pretty I'm, awesome. I met Tony, like we're saying, 2017 um, at a scientific roundtable uh, organized by George. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard about this roundtable a couple times now. That's very relevant. Talk about relevant. Yeah, my goodness. Listen to this. Hello, Mr. Carlson. My name is Austin Carlisle, and I will not be attending the Cosmic Summit this year to give this to you in person. Using Antonio Zamora's ellipse-fitting tool, I believe I have figured out how the Carolina Bays formed by carefully analyzing LIDAR imagery of partially formed bays that display telltale characteristics of an impeded impact cratering process. Before I submit my research paper to a formal journal, I would greatly appreciate it if you could review my work and provide some feedback to me. Thank you, Austin Carlisle. These photos are best viewed on a computer screen, but I will include a hard copy for your convenience. Great. Oh, man, this is awesome. I better see what uh, Austin has come up with here. Some beautiful graphics here. Yeah, I mean, talk about a synchronous. Much better work. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Austin. If you're watching this, Austin, are you tuned in on the virtual pass? Drop something in the comments. We'll try to beautiful find graphics. that. Is there, are we... Yeah, we're live. You can point it at that yeah, camera right good. there. All right, so I'm going to have fun reviewing this. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to try to see what people in the chat are saying because I couldn't find the chat earlier. Much to my chagrin. But now we're in business. What are we looking at there, Randall? Well, I can see there's a geometric analysis of the elliptical crater forms. Um Okay. Well, I see he's mentioning Chris Moore here. Um, over talking about overlapping craters on Mars, because that's one of the one of the features of Carolina Bays that led early on researchers to believe that they were possibly a uh, impact because of the overlapping rims, which is something you see in in acknowledged. Uh, craters on the moon, on Mars, and so on. So, very interesting. You know, that's one of the things that I really, to me, is so gratifying about um, the Cosmic Summit. Mm. This is my third one now, and the meeting the people doing interesting research. You so know, many just, people. Uh, yeah, and 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 seeing all these ideas. Oh, like look. When I met Tony in 2017, I don't think he knew Chris yet. So here those guys are now collaborating. Yeah, they were saying that Chris saw some of Tony's videos and then started making short translations in support of Tony. Uh -huh. So he would take these long 45 minutes videos and help people be able to understand it better in shorter chunks. Mm -hmm. And then... Tony started doing that when Chris, when he saw Chris doing it, doing the shorter videos. And then Chris started developing his own ideas about it and making longer videos. And that's how it's supposed to be. And now they're working together, just published a paper. Yeah, and it kind of feels full circle to me. I didn't tell the whole story, but, you know, what led me back after a couple of decades to this idea of the mega flooding 
I was led directly there by the Carolina Bays mm-hmm. because you were not in the room when we were talking about this, but when I first started studying the Carolina Bays, you know, you that was in the 80s. So you had the conflict between um, the celestials and the terrestrials. So the celestials, of course, were advocating some variant on an impact hypothesis, mm-hmm. and the terrestrials were, no, 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 it's um, strictly, you know, terrestrial-based, obviously, if, you know, with the name terrestrial, but... It's wind. Yeah. It's all wind. Well, the... the um, the the book it was actually a book it was much more than a paper the book that came out gosh when would it have been even in the 50s or 60s you might even look it up there the origin of the carolina bays douglas johnson and he was uh the dean of geomorphology i believe was it at stanford no um it was one of the eastern schools he was at columbia i believe he was at columbia the origin of the Carolina. wow originally published in 1942. Oh, is that long ago? My goodness. Yeah. Okay. Douglas Wilson Johnson. Yeah. Was he with Columbia? Let's see. So he writes this book, and the book the the purpose of the book was to put to rest any idea of you know cosmic impacts of things from space. I mean, in the 1940s, this was something that was completely outside the bounds of scientific credibility Mm -hmm. at all. So this book was, my primary purpose was to dispense, do away with um, the idea of of a cosmic impact. And so he came up with an alternative theory that he called the, the complex hypothesis, which should be a clue right there, you know, because in science you're always looking for Occam's razor. You're looking for that. Simplest, simplest explanation, outcome, yeah. right? Well, this was the complex hypothesis, uh, which stood for uh, Artesian solution, lacustrine, eolian hypothesis. Repeat that back to me now. Uh, Artesian. Good. Solution. Solution. Lacustrine. Lacustrine. Eolian. Eolian. Hypothesis. Artesian solution. Mm. Uh, lacustrine. Lacustrine. There it is. Okay, so artesian, you know, you, uh, artesian aquifer is basically, you know, underground water under pressure. Yeah. And an artesian aquifer will sometimes have, you know, sp- copious springs because that water, if it finds an aperture, it, it, and pressure will drive it up to the surface, right? So that was the first phase of the, of the idea. Arte- you had an artesian aquifer underground um, in a lot of the southeastern coastal plain where the uh, Carolina Bays are found have limestone bedrock. And so the idea was you have a, uh, a an area, you have a, a strata between two layers of rock that this water is moving downhill. So it's just like, think of a, a, a water tower. Mm-hmm. You know, by the gravity creates the pressure that, you know, when you turn the faucet on, it's that, it's that big tank sitting way up in the air. Right. right? So it's kind of like that. You've got it, it's a the water is flowing down. There's a reservoir, so it's under pressure. But then if you get to, let's say, an aperture, a crack, a fracture in the bedrock that leads to the surface, what can happen is I kind of liken it to being like an underground waterfall. So the water is coming down under pressure. It gets to this fracture, and then it goes like this. It moves up to the surface, and then it discharges on the surface. So that's the artesian part. Yeah. Then once it's flowed out from the surface, um, it tends to dissolve. The water flowing dissolves the the minerals, the rocks, the soil, um, and that's the solution part. So it goes artesian solution. Then lacustrine is that it forms a lake. Mm-hmm. Lake lacustrine basically is is a lake means a lake. Yeah. Okay, and then the Aeolian is the wind. So now the wind is blowing on the lake, and the waves sculpt the, 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 the shoreline of the lake into this virtually perfect ellipse. Like, like Tony was just saying, the, um, you know, they ran the least squares uh, method on the, on the ellipticity and mm-hmm. found out that they're almost perfect ellipses. So that was the complex hypothesis of D- Douglas Johnson and sort of the scientific community that had been looking at this felt like, okay, now he was the big gun of geomorphology. So he's 
you know, made the final word on it. So the controversy was now done, right? Well, then, and, and Chris Cottrell could probably give you a more definitive explanation of the history of, of it. Um, there was kind of a revival of uh, the extraterrestrial hypothesis. And then there was another book that came out called The Origins of the Carolina Bay by, uh, I forget his first name, Koxorowski was his mm. name. There were probably, if you still have Origins of the Carolina Bay up there, yeah. um, there's, yeah, so I think he had exactly the same title as Douglas Johnson's book. Koxorowski, like maybe a Czech name or K O C something. Hmm. I I did procure copies of Douglas Johnson's book, and so I have it in my collection, and Koxorowski's book in my collection. Carolina Bays and their relationship to modern oriented lakes. Is that is that I think that's the name of his work? Okay, that's it. Yeah. Kazarowski. Koxorowski. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. K-A-C-Z-O-R-O-W-S-K-I. Yeah, and he was very Shana much a gradualist, uh, did not like the idea of impacts at all. So he really... He was a terrestrialist. In, in, yeah, so in the book he actually says it was a big distraction that they even started talking about cosmic impacts and you know wasn't even worthy of consideration. I mean, all that kind of... You love it, right? Just yeah. dismissal. Yeah, so I've got I've got a whole section on the bays in one of my presentations that I used to do. I haven't done it in probably in ten years yeah. because, you know, Chris and Tony have sort of taken the the baton, yeah. and gone with it. Done a damn so good I'm job. I'm kind of like, okay, I'll just you know, let's see where you guys go with it. Um, but yeah, so when you look at the bays in North and South Carolina, they have almost a perfect forty five degrees southeast northwest azimuth. So if it, it, it's like so. What I was telling Tony when you were out of the room was that um, this would have been about 19, it was post Henry Savage's book, um, The Mysterious Carolina Bays, which mm. I think 87, 88. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's great. You're sitting right there yeah. immediately fact-checking. Yeah, The Mysterious Carolina Bays by Henry Savage. So I used to haunt the Fernbank Science Library in DeKalb County. And 1982, Henry Savage. 82? Yeah. Okay, so I probably didn't see it then until 86 or 87 because it had been out a while. So they had the book there in the Fernbank Science Library, and um, I had read about I mentioned to the guys when you were out that um, I'd first heard of the Carolina Bays in reading a book about Atlantis by Otto Mook, a German physicist, who believed that Atlantis, the destruction of Atlantis was caused by the impact of a six-mile low yeah. light. And that book was published in German, I think, in 79, translated into English in 1980, which was an interesting year because that was the same year that um, the Alvarez team published their famous paper on uh, the dinosaur killer asteroid, in which they... Uh, hypothesized that it was a six-mile asteroid, right? So Mook comes out with this idea in 1980. Did, did you look that up there? Mooks? The Secret of Atlantis, Otto Mook, M-U-C-K. I'm pretty sure English version was 1980. Uh, well, let's find out. Let's get these. Uh, so in there, he mentions uh, the Carolina Bays and thought that, you know, at that point there was evidence that they were um, you know, terminal Pleistocene, which we would now correlate with the Bias. 1979. Was the German, probably. Right? I think that's the English one. Okay. Well, it was right in there. 7980. Yeah. So I, I may have may have read it in the 80. But, but in any case, uh, at the same time that I was reading that, the Alvarez paper came out, which was you know, the uh, extraterrestrial hypothesis for the, where they had discovered the uh, iridium spike at the KT boundary yeah. 65 million years ago, which has been redated closer to 66 million. But, but um, so that's what got me interested. I, you know, uh, cause I'm reading about it and I go, well, this is right in my backyard. Mm. You know, I'm here in Georgia. So Carolina's not too far. Carolina's not too far. So then um, 
I was researching, I wanted to find out more. So I started going to the, this Fernbank Science Library, got made good friends with the librarian there, and I was doing research. Uh, and they had a copy of Henry Savage's book. So I read that book and then decided that I was so fascinated by it that I decided I wanted to learn all about the history of it. So I uh, went into the references, the bibliography, and over the next probably year, I was procured probably almost all of the references in his bibliography and carefully read through those, the pros and the cons, the the idea that I kind of gravitated to the most, though, is very similar to what Tony is now promoting, pro- proposing, which is that there was a uh, a you know a conical pressure wave that preceded uh, a hypervelocity entry of a molide into the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was definitely leaning towards an impact hypothesis yeah. uh, at that point, um, and I was also leaning toward it being you know pretty much right there what we would now consider the Younger Dryas, probably the, the lower Younger Dryas boundary around 12,900 years ago. Um, so as I'm studying it, I start thinking, well, let's look at the big picture here. So if you've got these elliptical, you know, you've got these nice ellipses, right? Mm-hmm. And they've got this this angle. You yeah, call it same the, orientation. Same orientation, roughly right at 45 degrees from southeast to northwest. So I thought, okay, if it was a bolide, be, due to the ellipticity, I'm going to assume it's an oblique entry into the atmosphere at a low angle. Yeah. So this would have brought it right in over the ice sheet if this occurred, you know, again, during the latter stages of the ice age. It would have been a big ice sheet, and it would have had to have passed over it. Then my thinking was, well, is there any evidence of anything unusual and then I started looking, at the, occurring with the ice sheet around that time. And so I started looking into that. And boy, there's a lot of unusual. Did things. I find some stuff that I'm still working okay. on here now, whatever, 40 years later. Yeah. So, well, I I don't want to I don't want to keep you in here when lunch starts, Randall. So that's no, we don't in, want that. That starts in three minutes here. Three minutes. So okay. today, yesterday, what's been your favorite part about Cosmic Summit 2025? Oh, my God. Well, I guess the favorite part so far is all of the great people I'm meeting, new people and old people. I, there's a bunch of people here that I've been on the tours with over mm. the last year, two years. How old are we talking? Oh, how old are we talking? You mean people that you I You said know. you like new people and old people. I do. I like new people and old people. Um, You've known some of these people for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Longer than that. Probably. Some of them longer than that, yeah. But a lot of them I've gotten to know in the last five to ten years. Um, you know, there's probably at least ten or twelve people here who've been on some of the recent tours with me. You know, yeah. We did that Bonneville flood tour last month that was really great. Yeah. Um, you know, and we've done, we've done. Uh, you know, I've lost count how many times I've been. Uh, you know, in the Pacific Northwest exploring probably close to 30 trips now wow so yeah. boots on the ground man you're getting mud on your boots as they getting say. mud on my boots yeah, yeah i am yeah. well you'll come back in here later this weekend we'll talk maybe we'll do a little bit more formal discussion about what you're going to be covering tomorrow sure. and sure monday as well sounds good yeah Let's all right okay everybody well we're about to tune off here and we will be back after lunch We've had, hopefully, I don't know, let us know. What do you think about this? More questions, more things that y'all want to be said on here. Shoot them out, and we'll take care of them. So see y'all in just a little bit.